Greetings to you all in the name of Jesus, and welcome to Bible in a Year. Happy Good Friday to you all. In Jesus' name, we have a celebration at hand. What a momentous season that we are in right now with the Passover coming up and our remembrance of what Jesus did for us. This is a solemn few days that we are entering into and a powerful boost to our faith. Let us celebrate our Savior and our God with all of our hearts, minds, soul, and strength. This is day 101. We have now entered into new dimensions, and I have an anticipation in my spirit for God to continue doing amazing things. I believe that we have not yet had the greatest discussion. I believe that we've not yet had the deepest reflection. I believe that we've not yet experienced the greatest power working through these videos. I believe that this year, God is going to deliver people through the power of social media, these videos. I believe that the anointing and the power of God is going to flow through this. I believe that God is going to anoint me and use me as a vessel to speak deliverance, healing, and life directly to you. I believe that people are going to testify and say, Brother Klaus, when you said this and this and this, something in me broke and I began to weep. Brother Klaus, when you were talking about this and this, I felt this healing sensation come over me, this fire, this burning, and I've been joyful ever since. I believe that this is going to happen. It has to. We are living in the end times and now is the time for apostolic power and demonstration. It's not just words that we talk. It's not just things that we say, but what we have, we have and we bring it with power. The words that we speak, the words that we teach, the words that we preach under the unction and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, they come with a demonstration of power beyond what this world has to offer. And that is what makes us true, spirit-filled believers different than every other religion or faith that exists. We have power. I feel power right now all over me, all around me. If you are just joining this video series, Bible in a Year, I just feel on my spirit to emphasize that this is not just a video where we're just reading the Bible. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but this is not a Bible reading video. I don't want people to get the wrong impression when they see Bible in a year and think that this is just, okay, some guy reading from the Bible. No, no, no. We're getting into the Word of God, and uh, what I do is I'll I read the same scriptures that you do, and God will speak to me about certain things. Certain scriptures will highlight in my heart and they have meaning, and God will either reveal something, show something, let me see something, and I take those scriptures, and I write them down, and then I just build from there. You might have different scriptures highlighted to you. So this video is a discussion of what I have received in my Bible reading. And then in the comments, this is where you lend your reflections. You can respond to my reflection, comment on that, respond to what you've read, if God has showed you something, if you received something brand new. And it's it, the purpose of this, as I have come to see it, is to establish a community of believers that can get into the Word of God together and sharpen each other with the meditations and reflections that we've experienced throughout our time with God in His Word. So that's the purpose of Bible in a Year. It's not just somebody reading the Bible, although that would be powerful still, but no, reflections and meditations help us to really dig the Word of God deeper into our hearts. 
It, it helps us to memorize that. We're connecting the word of God to our memories. And that, that's what we want. We want to remember what we learn. We don't want to just have information pass through the screen of our conscience and then we retain nothing. No. But under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I pray that Whatever it is that you need in this moment, in this season, that there will be a Rema experience for you and that it connects with you in a deep way that cannot be explained with human intelligence. It's just a spiritual intuition, a knowing that, you know what? God has touched me somehow. Something's different. Something's changed. I feel it. I don't know how to explain it. I can't qualify it. I just know. Praise God. So, Bible in a year. Day 101. I have a few selections from the book of Psalms and then a verse in Luke. So, I want to read from the King James Version of the Bible. We can have the privilege. I just said I wasn't reading the Bible. <laughs> Listen, no, no, this is not hypocritical right here. Um, I'm reading the verses that spoke to me. I'm not going through the whole list of readings, praise God. But the verses that I do have highlighted, I'm going to read them to you so that you know where I am and where I'm coming from. Um, you can follow along in whatever version you have. If, whether it's the NLT, the NIV, the NASB, the YLT, the CJB, the whatever other version there is, praise God. There's a lot of them. NKJV, the Amplified Bible. Give the Lord a shout. Can you tell I miss church? I do, man. I miss assembling with my brothers and sisters. And All right, let's stop chasing rabbits. We're in Psalms chapter 44, verse 1. And the Bible says this to the chief musician for the sons of Korah, Mashil. We have heard with our ears, that is a personal experience, a personal witness, a personal testimony. O oh God, our fathers have told us what work thou didst in their days, in the times of old. This is a powerful, powerful, powerful concept. We have heard with our ears, O oh God, our fathers have told us. I'm afraid that in the times that we are living in, more and more so, we do not have our fathers around to tell us these things. And I am one of those persons. I did not have my father around to tell me these things, to tell me anything, actually. What we see here is the sons of Korah testifying that we've heard our father has taught us about God. We've heard with our own ears what our fathers have told us about you. It is an address to God. Hey, we heard from our fathers what you've done in their life, in their times of old. And because we've heard, we've come to you to test you in the sense to to, to see whether what we've heard is true. Now, there's something missing here because the sons need fathers. Daughters need fathers. There is something about the male figure, and let me clarify that by emphasizing and highlighting the importance of a father, by no means am I inversely implying that the mother's role is unimportant or less important. No, the, a mother's role is equally important, but in a different way because they are two different functions that a mother and a father bring to the table. 
And a father has the power to validate. We see this in the case of Jesus at his baptism. And uh, the Bible says that God spoke and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. God validated Jesus. The father validated the son. And that's powerful. So we see fathers and uh, the influence that a father has in the son's life. Now, specifically speaking here, a father's responsibility or duty to teach his children about God, to testify the things that God has done in his life and in his father's life and in his father's father's life to tell about all of the great things that God has done. It's the father's responsibility, not the Sunday school teacher, not the preacher. It is not the preacher's job to teach your children about God. And if you're in a single household, if your household is that of a single status, you're a single mom, you're a single dad, then moms, it is your responsibility to teach the word of God. It is the parent's responsibility to teach the word of God to the children. Don't leave it up to your Sunday school teacher. Don't leave it up to the preacher. Don't leave it up to the guest evangelist that comes every so many weeks don't leave it up to them. You teach your children about God. Speak from your own experiences. Speak from the testimonies of your mothers and your fathers and transmit that to the next generation. If we fail to do that, then there is somebody else that is vowing for the attention of your children right now. And he doesn't play very fair. The enemy wants your kids. The enemy wants your children. The enemy wants to steal from them. He wants to rob them. He wants to destroy them. He's probably got them watching YouTube all day, if he can have his way, watching TV all day. Just letting their minds be programmed and bombarded with satanic agenda that we see in the videos today, that we see in the movies today. We have to be very careful with how we allow our kids to expose themselves to knowledge. Let us be the source of knowledge. Don't allow your kids to be trained and taught by the world. It's imperative. Now, I don't want you to feel bad and beat yourself up saying, well, I got to work two jobs to keep it together. No, I understand. I understand that situations and circumstances might not be ideal at the moment. Perhaps they haven't been ideal in a long time. But what I am a firm believer in is that where there is a will, there is a way. <clears throat> if you want to find a way to do that, you will. God has rebuked me before. God has rebuked me uh, concerning seeking him. I remember there was a time that I think that I wasn't feeling like praying or prayer wasn't particularly exciting or uh, I, I wasn't feeling the Holy Ghost and the joy and the goosebumps and all of the wonderful, pleasurable feelings that can accompany the presence and glory of God. And it seemed that prayer had become a chore. So I consequently prayed less than I used to. And the Lord spoke to me and talked to me and said, Klaus, do you remember the way that you used to pursue weed? how passionately you pursued weed. I mean, we used to have what they call droughts where you couldn't get any weed or it was really, really hard to get weed for some reason. And uh, I remember these droughts 
when one of these droughts would hit, I found some weed. I wanted some weed. I found it and I looked for it until I found it and I didn't quit. I was determined. I'm going to smoke a blunt today. Thank God I've been delivered. Haven't struggled with it since. August 27th, 2011. Glory be to God. I was miraculously, instantaneously delivered. Take that in your face, devil. Anyways, God said, I want you to pursue me and chase me and look for me like you used to look for weed when there was a drought. And that pricked me. Oh, that, that stung me to the heart. That, that touched deep. I felt convicted and ashamed. And I was like, man, yo, you're right. I used to, I used to go without question. Wow. We need to pursue God like that. Pray and get a hold of God like that. So if there is an obstacle to where, you know what, I don't know how to do it. I believe that you can figure it out. God can figure it out. Go to God in prayer and figure it out. Somehow let God work it out for you because we need to be present in the lives of our children. And there is a void and an emptiness and a pain that children experience when there is an absent father and an absent mother too. But right now I want to talk about dads and the absence of dads. There is uh, this concept called a father's wound and many young men and women that have these father wounds, they deal with certain types of trauma. It's a trauma and it can be various degrees of intensity depending on how this trauma hits you. And uh, it, it's a severe influence of rejection or it can be at least. And given the right situations and circumstances, someone with a root of rejection caused by a father's wound, wound would be more willing to do certain things for the attention and validation that was lacking so that they can feel like a normal human. God instituted this system of mother and father and family with the way that it is set up because it works. And when that's missing, that need and that desire, it there's still a place for it. There's still a longing for that. I remember me when I grew up, man, because I didn't have my father in my life to tell me how to be a man, to teach me different things. My mother, God bless her heart. My mother, I remember when I was a kid, I remember two instructions that she left me with. And uh, we were separated for quite some time. And those two instructions, I always remembered them. One was, if you get into a fight, always look the other person in the eyes. <laughs> And the other one was take care of your baby brother. And from that moment, like I carried that, that was a command. I carried that. And, uh, I've, I've always looked out for my brother and I thank God for, for that. I thank God for the things that I did learn, but that wasn't enough. That carried me in certain moments. But there was a whole lot that I had to figure out on my own. There was a whole lot that I didn't know that it wasn't passed down to me. I learned a whole lot from TV, music. I learned a lot of things that really I had no business learning, but I had no idea. And it, I didn't go to these sources to learn from them. It happens. You know that saying, monkey see, monkey do? Well, it's true bars like that. Anyways, it, it's true. People do what people see you do. If you tell them don't do this and they watch you doing that very thing all their life. Yeah. Intellectually, they know not to do that, but that's not what they were taught. They were taught to do that. And then to say, don't do that because people will learn 
what they see other people do. They'll do what they see you do. You have to live by example, not by, not by words, not by instructions. You have to have some money in the bank before you write checks like that. If you try to tell your kids, don't do this, don't do that, and you ain't living that, well, you just, your checks are bouncing. Your words have no meaning. They're not backed by actions. So I, with, without that father figure validation, I was looking for that in any way that I could. So I got into the wrong crowd, gang bangers and drug dealers, people that did drugs and stuff, man. We used to hang in the streets. And you know what? The sad thing is we were all lost boys. And we found that validation in the camaraderie that we had with each other, at least to a certain crippling degree. It wasn't healthy. It wasn't whole, wholesome. But... It was a cheap, generic substitute, and it got us by. And it breaks my heart when I see that now. Fatherless kids. But thank God we have a heavenly father. And there is a psalm, Psalm 27, 10. When mother and father forsake you, then the Lord will take you up. And God will show himself to be a father. But this, this has motivated me when the time comes and the Lord blesses me with children. I just, ha I just believe I'm going to be one of the best dads in the world because I know what I was missing and I know what I would have wanted. And I'm going to give that to my kids. And I pray that it works. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just have a strong belief that I'll be able to influence my kids in a way that I was never influenced by a godly father figure. So dads are important. Let's go to Psalms chapter 44, verse three. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them, but thy right hand and thine arm and the light of thy countenance, because thou hadst a favor unto them. And uh, for some reason, I'm having trouble with my memory on the video and it keeps <clears throat> cutting my videos off. So I'm just going to highlight this verse here and uh, then I'll have to cut the video. I don't understand. I erased like a whole bunch of stuff and it didn't register. So I have to do some investigating. But anyways, I wanted to mention this because I spoke on it the other day. And this is something that needs to be drilled into our hearts. This is something that we, we don't just need to know, we need to understand. Understanding makes a difference. We need to understand that it's not by our own sword. It's not by power or by might, but by the Spirit of God that we are going to possess the promise. It's by the Spirit of God that we do anything that we do. I was telling a disciple earlier about abiding in Christ, John chapter 15, where Jesus communicates with his disciples saying, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit on its own, except it abide in the vine. And he goes on to explain and reveal that without me, you can do nothing. But we have Christ in us, the hope of glory. And because Christ is in us, abiding in us, and we in him, through reading the Bible, prayer, this is how we abide in Christ. By doing that, we will be empowered by his spirit because he said that his strength is made perfect in our weakness. So it is by his strength and his might that we will be able to take possession of the land. The verse continues, neither did their own arm save them. We cannot save ourselves. It is the gift of God that is accessed by grace through faith. I know we talked about that yesterday a little bit, but here we are again with it. And I don't, I don't mind. I need to drill this in me. 
For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. But thou hast saved us from our enemies and hast put them to shame that hated us. God is our savior. God is our father and our deliverer. And where our own arm has failed us, and I know that some of us have tried. Some of us have tried a lot and we failed. But God, God is faithful and he will perform. He'll do what he said he'll do and he will give us the strength. We just have to learn how to come to him. May the Lord bless you on this Good Friday and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and give you peace. In Jesus' name.